Good morning, the internet. Well, I don't know what's going into me today, but uh, I am chipper. I hope you are feeling good about yourselves too. Uh, this morning I have a little announcement before we get to the question and answer proper. Uh, this is about my editing preparation book for authors, Edit Ready, which I have uh, finally, yesterday, uploaded the final version uh, of the uh, 2016A edition, which is the very first public edition of my book. So, if there is anyone out there in YouTube land who wants a free preview copy of 2016A, then please get in touch with me. Send me a message via Twitter or via my website. You will find the links below. So, on with the Q&A. Here's a question that came from a conversation with an author, uh, rather than a classic Q&A session, and one which I suppose wasn't really presented as a question um, so much as an open statement in the hope of getting some useful information out of me. So that's what I've tried to do in this answer. So here's what the author said to me, more or less paraphrasing. He said, I use the method that I read in William Noble's book, Show, Don't Tell. In the book, he states that narrative should contain drama. Your narrative should tell a story that the reader can't put down. Now, William Noble went out of his way to deliver his writing advice as extended essays, some of which are narrative and semi-narrative in form. That's because he's trying, as any responsible teacher does, to give you a complete picture of what you need to learn and to lead you into an understanding of it. But, but he's battling a quick fix soundbite culture where immaturity is characterized by the belief that if you could only distill a TLDR from the long answer and drink that filter, you will, by knowing the empirical essence of the thing, know the thing, and the whole of the thing. I weep. Because in our quick-fix soundbite culture, maturity is characterized by bitter disillusion. The stark realization that the learning you need isn't found by reading a table of contents. That the writer wasn't being self-indulgent by giving a ten-page explanation of why you often have to cut all but the last sentence of a paragraph, or why you have to cut 30 lines of dialogue and leave only the two that matter. The writer was taking 10 pages, because 10 pages is how long it takes to begin to understand the processes behind those principles. The asker of the question summarizes Noble's noble effort with two phrases, narrative should contain drama and tell a story the reader can't put down. In a way, it's Noble's own fault. No matter how much he might excuse it for pandering to the quick-fix soundbite culture in his title, Show, Don't Tell. After all, Noble does a great deal of telling, because much of the time, to tell is exactly what you need. All the best narrative is a combination of show and tell. Readers can get impatient with excessive showing, just as they can be bored with excessive telling. Narrative should contain drama. Drama is the anticipation of conflict. And in conflict, drama is resolved. Narrative is just a word that we give to the way that information is strung together in a story. And if you really want to cut right down to what a story is, below the bone, below the marrow, below the cellular level, the DNA of what a story really is for, you will find stories are for teaching. I'm not going to go into more detail than that in this answer, but know this. We use stories to teach people the most important of what they need to know. And most of that is about how to solve problems, how to approach and resolve issues, how to face the unknown, how to deal with strangers, and much more besides. In fact, 
it's almost impossible to come up with something that you want to teach that isn't being taught in anticipation of some sort of difficulty, some sort of struggle or conflict. Narrative doesn't contain drama. Narrative describes drama, and it describes a response to drama, and it describes the consequences of that response. If you want a definition of stories at the skeletal level, it's that. It's drama, response to drama, consequences of the response, which, of course, sometimes lead to more drama. Tell a story the reader can't put down. To me, this represents everything that is wrong with summarising. Yes, Noble, more or less, says this. He means it. But he also means you to understand what he means by it. He wants you to learn how to do it. Take this out of the context of William Noble's carefully written book, and you're left with hopelessly inadequate advice, on a par with being told that the best way to win a chess championship is not to lose any of the matches. The best way to write a book that a reader can't put down is much the same as the best way to win a chess championship. You have to dedicate yourself to studying the means by which that aim is achieved. You can't skip to the TLDR. Captivating and enthralling a reader can be done in many different ways. And there are means that are suitable to different kinds of stories, and there are means that are effective with different kinds of readers. The beating heart of a book, if you'll allow me to flesh out my metaphor, which when you think about it is a meta-metaphor, the beating heart of a story is drama. And drama alone is a deep well, and well worth plumbing. When you encounter advice like, show, don't tell, narrative should contain drama, tell a story the reader can't put down, don't nod sagely and then wonder how it's done, go out of your way to understand what the giver of the advice really means. Dive into the bottom of the well, read the long version, see the elephant. A time will come when you'll look at those sound bites and instead wonder why it even needed to be said. And you'll conclude that it is best to show and tell. You'll conclude that narrative always contains drama. You'll conclude that if the reader puts it down, it wasn't the story they were looking for.